Baldur's Gate 3's long-awaited Patch 7 out now on PC alongside massive patch notes. Larian's masterpiece is going to stick around for a very long time. We know many third-party mods utilize Script Extender, and as part of the toolkit and patch testing with mod authors, efforts to help support compatibility with Patch 7 should mean that mods that require Script Extender will continue to work. A big thank you to Norbite, creator of Script Extender, and to all of the mod authors who have contributed to the toolkit with their feedback. We couldn't have done it without you. Introducing Evil Endings, brand new cinematic endings for the truly villainous playthroughs. Added our very own mod manager, which lets you browse, install, and use mods created by the community. Revamped split screen gameplay. When playing on split screen, the two halves of the screen will now dynamically merge together when player characters come close to each other in game and dynamically split back up when the characters move apart. This revamp comes alongside many other improvements and polishes to improve the overall split screen experience. Honor mode combat. If Dror Ragslin finds himself inside the spider pit, he'll try his best to befriend the spiders residing there with a new spell called Arachnid Compulsion so they can band together to fight the real enemy you. The Bulette has a new condition called Diamond Scales and a new legendary action called Shredding Scales. Malice Thorm has a new legendary action called Grasping Appendage. Added a new aura and spell for spectators, Panic Sentinel and Ocular Nightmare, respectively. See Chariai Tsgan, the leader of the Githyanki Ambush in Act 2, has a new legendary action called Soul Sacrifice. See Chariai Harak, the Githyanki leader at the Knights of the Shield Hideout, has a new legendary action called Tunaratha's Embrace. Taurus has a new legendary action called Tarian Dogma. You can now start custom mode games using honor mode mechanics when starting a new playthrough. You'll be able to do this via the rule set dropdown. The Quitoa that promised to build you an army will now support you in the final battle. Unless they all died in Act 1. The help that the Gondians promised for the final battle will now arrive in the form of a friendly Steel Watcher. Apologies from Zoner Tubin for the delay. The hair color options in character creation will now remain accessible after you choose the bald hairstyle so that you can continue fiddling around with eyebrow colors. Overhead dialogues that support multiple player characters can now involve characters assigned to different players. They were limited to characters controlled by a single player until now. This means that there will be more banter among player characters in multiplayer games. Group hide will no longer affect summons that aren't linked to the group in the party line. Change the behavior for selecting camp supplies for a long rest. When selecting camp supplies that are stacked, the game now only takes what it needs from the stack. You can no longer cheese the Leap of Faith trial at the Gauntlet of Shar by just clicking the final platform and letting your character path find their way there. Shar threatened to smite us if we didn't fix this one. Fixed a bug where resurrecting Lazelle on the beach in act, I would cause her to appear in the party line but not in the world, preventing you from leaving Act 1. Patched up some save games where Gale still had his necrotic aura when he shouldn't unload. Fixed Mithra's body sometimes, turning invisible on the level-up screen. We sorta liked the floating head and hands look, but hey. Reworked and revamped the cutscene that plays when you interact with Answer's bones in the worm way. Polished facial expressions and emotions across companion dialogues, including to the facial animations of your character during some kissing cinematics, including with a vampire Lord Asterian.